<laughs> How fun are Tuesdays, huh? I was going to say, I mean, tonight, pretty spectacular night. I mean, we've had these five contract nights a couple times, but tonight just seemed like especially exciting. Did this seem like a, a special one for you? Yeah, it's just it, I, I, every Tuesday, man, it's, 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 it's awesome. It's hard to explain, but, you know, we, we, we had a tough first one there, and, and ever since we've been right back on track, the, uh, this, is a fun, this is a fun show, man. It's a fun show. Great performances up and down the card, four finishes. Did anybody, like, really grab your attention tonight? Stand yeah. out as, like, the MVP of the night, so to speak? Yeah, Rabisti. <laughs> that guy is fucking unbelievable. Powerful, um, you know, pulls off that choke. Apparently that kid weighed 180 pounds tonight, picked him up like he was a little kid and slammed him. He's going to be fun to watch. And obviously, um, I just said to Laura, and it's true, the one thing I feel like we've been missing – for years as a, as a big Japanese star, and uh, this kid can definitely be it. I want to ask you about that with, with, with the J Japanese market. You said having a big star. I know the world's still kind of getting back to normal in terms of travel and stuff like that, but where does Japan rank as a market, like as a target for you guys, right? Because it's been kind of a weird one over the years. Every country, you know, is, is, is big if you have a star from that region, you know? Um, I mean, look at Ireland when we found Connor and, 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 and the UK with Bisbing and, and, you know, the list goes on and on. And wait till we go back to the UK now with Edwards in the rematch. I mean, when, when you get these kids who, who, uh, who become stars in these regions, it's, it's massive. I mean, look at Australia. First time we ever went to Australia, we had Elvis Sinisic. You know what I mean? Now there's multiple world champions out of that place. So if this kid continues to rise and do big things in the UFC – Japan will just blow up. I think the only one, I wouldn't even say questionable, the one that maybe was surprising tonight was Victoria, right? Because it wasn't the greatest fight ever. Um, it, it, what was it that sold you on that that you're like, let's, let's go, let's get Everything about her sold me. She's hurt. Um, she, she even walked down the stairs acting like she wasn't hurt after the fight. Usually you'll see people like, uh, you know, the other kid kicked the knee. I heard him kick that knee too. I knew. Uh, and Mick goes, there goes his foot. And sure enough, you know what I mean? And, and he, he had to get on crutches to get out of there. That girl walked down the stairs. I don't know if I've ever seen a fighter mentally, physically, and as emotionally strong as that girl is. She, she's a beast. And she just walked up to me and said, I'm going to be a world champion. And I said, yeah, I, I, I don't doubt it. What I saw from you tonight, I don't doubt it. She beat the more experienced girl, the bigger, stronger girl, um, you know, and, and absolutely dominated her. It sounds like she actually came into the fight injured as yeah. well, right? So I'm just curious, like, would you advise fighters, like, please don't do that? Or, like, I mean, it's a big opportunity, Listen, right? That, that's up to doctors. She saw a doc. I just talked to the doctor back there, and he said, yeah, she, she, she was fine. I don't know if she's going to need surgery now because her knee, her knee buckled in, in there. And, and you, you know, we all saw that. So they got to do an MRI on her now. But uh, she got a cortisone shot, and she was fine. So um, I leave that up to the doctors. Got to ask you about this weekend, historic weekend for the UFC heading to Paris. Uh, I guess give me the excitement level, right? I mean, this is like the international New York, right? It took forever to get this done. I mean, how does it how does it feel to finally have this event? Yeah, it's already sold out. The event is completely sold out already, and and I think that uh, you know another arena record, and you know the first time in, in Paris. So, yeah, it's it's awesome. It's exciting. The main event was Cyril Gane and Taito Vlas. So obviously, a big one at heavyweight. It's number one versus number three. Um, are you looking at that as a potential number one contender fight? I mean, I know Cyril just had a title shot, but could the winner here get a title shot? Yeah, I mean, that's how it works. I mean, if, if Ty wins, obviously uh, he, he's next in line, and, and the Cyril fight was close. The only questions, I guess, would be like John Jones, Stipe. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm not making – first of all, I don't make the fight before the fight. I, I mean, anything is possible. But, yeah, we, we don't know how any of this is going to play out because the heavyweight champ still hurt anyway. So I don't know. But, obviously, whoever wins on Saturday is, is right there. Right. Last thing for me, I'll ask kind of a similar question to co-main event with Whitaker and, and Vittori. They're kind of in that similar position, right, where, like, they're 0-2 against Adesanya, but they, you know, they keep beating everyone else in the division. So when you look at those guys, do you think that they just have to – hope that Pajeda wins so they can get another title shot? Or, you know, if they keep winning, can they get back to Adesanya even though they're both 0-2? I mean, yeah, that's – I mean, 
who, again, who knows le leading into the fight. You know, see how the fight turns out and what happens. Um, and then obviously what happens with the Israel fight. But, uh, you know, I, I saw things where Whitaker was saying he wants to go to light heavyweight after this fight. So I don't know. I, I don't even think about this kind of stuff until it happens. Hey, Dana. Um, hey. In the co main event, S.T. Dimas, you said that um, before his fight, he made you a believer. What do you mean by that? Yeah, I was listening to his feature. I told, I told these guys that were sitting with me, I said, if this fight's half as good as the feature, this should be a badass fight. Um, you know, because you had a guy who's got like 60 amateur fights. He's like 23 and 3 in kickboxing. And, and this kid who, you know, says, I come from the streets. This is how I'm going to provide for my family. I have to believe in myself. And, you know, I thought the feature was awesome. Um, I mean, do you kind of see him as a kind of like a star? Like he's, he's, he's got the look, he's got the knockouts, he's got the, he's got the personality. Like, do you see him going far? Yeah, I think that everybody that, that comes on the Contender Series has the potential to be a star. Um, uh, and yeah, yeah. Um, and other news, your favorite fighter. If you look at Kevin Holland when he, when he fought here, he, he, he talked so much, he drove me crazy. I, I, I couldn't stand him. And now I love the kid. You know what I mean? So, yeah, all, all these kids. And, and, and the, the most important thing about the show is the way that these guys fight. I mean, every Tuesday they come in here and fight their asses off, and that's, that's what's important. Absolutely. Um, there's a rumor that Jake Paul and, and Anderson Silva are going to fight in October. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I, I don't give a shit what they You know what I mean? But if he's really fighting Anderson Silva, if he's really fighting Anderson Silva, if that's true, it's about time. Yeah, he's, he's got a real fight in his hands there. You know, regardless of how old Anderson is. Um, yeah, that's a real fight. Thank you. Hey, Dana. Hey. Um, I was wondering if you heard um, Chael Sonnen's comments about Leon, how he cheated his way to the title. I'm wondering if you could comment on that. That he cheated his way? The fence, he was saying he had too many fence grabs that were unchecked. He had to do what? Too many fence grabs. Chael Sonnen is saying that Leon grabbed the fence too many times and it wasn't checked, and that's how he became champion. <laughs> became champion with a head kick. <laughs> he didn't win by grabbing the fence. I mean, he, he got absolutely dominated in that whole fight except for that couple minutes in the first round. He got absolutely dominated, and uh, you know, that's, that's completely unfair of Chael Sonnen to say that. That kid sucked it up, dug down deep, and landed literally the perfect head kick with like a minute left of the fight. So I, I would say that that's silly, ridiculous, and absolutely unfair to say about Leon. There's also a photo of Sean Strickland's finger. It looks uh, terrible, badly infected. He's saying he's gonna need surgery. Do you know if that's going to affect the fight coming up or? Yeah, it does. Yeah, he's out. Thank you. Yep. Going back to Paris, you know, with it being a new uh, country, were there any unique logistics or things that you guys ran into? Obviously, they had to make MMA legal over there, but was there anything leading into this that was maybe new or different that kind of threw a wrench in, into it? And do you expect uh, any government officials? You mean this week? No, just in terms, just to make it happen. I guess this week. Yeah, I mean, it took us years to get there. It took yeah. years of hard work and lobbying and, you know, um, yeah, it took a very, very long time to get it done. But nothing going into this week that's uh, unusual to deal with. Have any members of the government reached out and want to take part, come watch it or anything? Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure they will. Um, yeah. And this week also, you guys are bringing back the open workout that's been gone for a long time. I guess the location and stuff, is that something you think that we're going to see back here in the States as well? I don't know. I, I, I honestly don't know why we got rid of it. Yeah, I don't know. Okay. And last for me, one of the things you said, you know, when you talked about Blake Builder up there, you said you're not looking for 32-year-olds, but he made you interested. You made him want... Is there an age limit, or is that the kind of thing that matchmakers should weed out before they get here? Or, or is there guys that just at some age that you're like, is this right for you to, to try at this age? Yeah, it's a fact. I'm, I'm not looking for 32-year-olds to come into the UFC. Um, 
So what the matchmakers do is they make the best fights they can with the guys that they think have potential. So regardless of what I'm looking for, they're, they're, they're trying to put on the best fights possible. And if you're 32 years old, come in and make me want a 32-year-old. That's your job, not mine. You know what I mean? You come in and you do what this kid did tonight. He got me excited about a 32-year-old. So, um, yeah, that's how this works. Hey, Dana. Yeah? Um, in week one, you gave a passionate and somewhat angry speech imploring fighters to be more like Joe Pfeiffer and make the most of their chance here at the Contender Series. Now that we're beyond the halfway point and you're saying how much you love Tuesday nights, are you more satisfied with what you've seen so far? Uh, yeah, I mean, th there's, been, there's been six seasons of this show. It's the sixth season. And uh, every season has been incredible. It's just we had a, a very weird night the first night of the, of the Contender Series uh, this season. Um, but... I, I guess I fixed it. I don't know. Or, or <laughs> that was just a very weird night. You think the speech worked? Um, I, I, I wouldn't say that it was the speech. I mean, we, if we didn't have five seasons before this of unbelievable fights, you know, maybe, maybe people needed to be reminded. I, I don't know what happened, but, you know, uh, all I care is that we're back on track. And um, last week, uh, you said Joe Piper and Cameron Simon were two standout performances, uh, performers of the season so far. Uh, does Cedriquez Dumas and Rabisti rank as highly as them after what they did tonight? D does Rabisti rank as high as who? Uh, Piper and um, yeah, Piper and Simon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you look at the season so far and you look at talent and potential, yeah, uh, Rabisti might be number one. He, he might be number one. So I, I, I'm looking. They, they got Cormier picking the power rankings, and he doesn't have this guy number. <laughs> and, uh, going Cormier. Back, going back to Jake Paul and Anderson mm. Silva, would you be tempted? Come on. To give Anderson? Are you serious? No, I'm not tempted to do anything. Would you be tempted? Stop asking me about Jake Paul, you guys. I, I, I don't give a shit what Jake Paul does. Jake, Jake, I know you love this shit, and I know it gives you clicks, but come on. Come on. The guy has nothing to do with my business. I, 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 it's nothing to do with my business. He doesn't fight for me. He's not even in the same fucking sport as me. I, I don't want to talk about him anymore. It's, I don't care. Um, I was going to tell you something, though. You made me forget. Uh, um, fuck, I don't know what I was going to say. I was going to say something good, though. <laughs> In, in other boxing news, Eddie Hearn and Matchroom Sport announced a partnership with DCT in Abu Dhabi. I was wondering if you gave any advice to any of the parties there, considering how fond you are of DCT. And do, do, we, do we have any what? Did you give any advice to either DCT, Matchroom Sport? Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. I wouldn't say that I... Yeah, I guess I gave a little advice, yeah. No, it's good to have Eddie Hearn. I, I like Eddie Hearn. I respect him as a promoter and, and, and as a person. And... Uh, I'm happy for him because Abu Dhabi is an awesome place. They're incredible people to do business with. And, um, yeah, yeah, it's good when you see a couple of good groups hook up together. So, uh, um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy. One of the things I liked about when we were all on Fight Island was just how much it was like a festival of combat sports, event after event after event. Because, you know, they do the jiu-jitsu there. Uh, the UAE Warriors is there. Matchroom is now there. Would you be tempted to... You kind of do one event yourself there and then have matchroom piggyback off, you know, like a Saturday afterwards? Yeah, I, I mean, anything's possible. I, I, I know that, you know, they're, they're, they're um, looking to do lots of things for tourism over there, um, from concerts to fights to, you know, boxing, MMA. Um, yeah, yeah it's, I mean, nicest hotels in the world, greatest restaurants in the world, Probably the best service in the world when you talk about Abu Dhabi. Um, and, and you know how I always talk about destinations for people from all over the world that have never been to the Middle East. If you're going to the Middle East for the first time and you really want to have a great experience, there's no place like Abu Dhabi. It's the best. Thanks, Dana. Thank you. Hey, Dana, um, you said Sean Strickland is out. How, how bad is his, is his finger? I don't know. I don't know. We had matchmaking today, and uh, 
that was when I found out that there was something wrong with him. Yeah. And they haven't said like a time frame of when he'd be able to. No, nothing. Um, Leon Edwards Usman rematch. Is there any uh, any idea of when that will no. be and where? Not yet. No. And you had mentioned that there would be a venue uh, that would lose their spot in order to make that happen in the UK. What uh, what location was that that would lose the fight next year? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's true. I'm not saying that. Though. I'm not gonna <laughs> fucking. <laughs> that would be fucked up. I'm not doing that. But yes, that is true. One follow-up: um, Can you announce who is replacing Sean Strickland? I think we 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 took we just scrapped the fight. Scrapped the fight. Yeah. Um, and then. Uh, you, with UFC 279 just around the corner, um, are you happy how the how the fight card has turned out so far? With you adding Tony and with you adding Kevin Holland versus Daniel Rodriguez. Well, I'm sorry, ask me that question again. With with uh, UFC 279 right around the corner, are you happy with how the fight card has turned out after it being kind of weak to begin with? <laughs> <laughs> You're a dick. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm very happy with with the fight card. Yes, yes. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Dana? Yeah. Oh, shit. <clears throat> I did talk with Glover Teixeira a few, few days ago, and he told me that he was trying to push to fight Jiri in Brazil, but Jiri denied maybe this fight would happen in the U.S. in December. That's the fight you guys are looking for? Yeah, I don't know yet. We, we, we don't have that done yet. But it's part of the, your idea? Mm-hmm. Good. Last question from me, please. Do you have any fight scheduled for UFC Brazil next year, or it's not yet? Soon, it's too soon for that. Yeah, not yet. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thanks for coming. <laughs>